Hello and welcome to Game Objective. My name is Brad Glasgow and recently the Anti-Defamation League published the results of a new study called Free to Play, Hate, Harassment and Positive Social Experiences in Online Games. I'm going to pull a Philly D here and just get right into it. This so-called study by the Anti-Defamation League is garbage and you should not trust its results. In order to come to that conclusion I talked to the Anti-Defamation League about my concerns with their survey. I spoke with a professor who is one of the leading researchers in the field of video games and their psychological impact. And of course I relied on my own experience as a former survey researcher myself who spent about a dozen years designing, writing, managing and analyzing survey research. Ladies and gentlemen it's time to tear apart a survey. I'm not going to take up all of your time reading all the results or anything. I'm just, just going to hit on the major points and tell you why they're crap. First, I should point out that the survey did have some positive results associated with online gaming. It found that 88% of adults reported positive social experiences while playing online games. Unfortunately, given the other results of the survey, we can't trust that number. Because then they get into the negatives. Their results showed that 74% of adults who play online multiplayer games in the United States report that they have experienced some form of harassment while playing games online. That number, well, it's not too far-fetched. I think most of us have experienced some bad people in online games. In surveys like these, they often consider the basic troll behavior that is stereotypical of Xbox Live to be, quote, harassment. And well, that's fine with me as long as we know that's what they're saying. But then they go on to say that 65% of respondents have experienced, quote, some form of severe harassment, including physical threats, stalking, and sustained harassment. Again, that's something that depends heavily on their definitions, but let's get past that for now. Because then they take a swan dive off the diving board into full-on crazy territory. 29% of all people who play multiplayer video games have been doxxed, according to the Anti-Defamation League. Oh, and for those of you who don't know, doxing means someone who has discovered your private information, like your home address or your phone number, and they published it. 29%, nearly one-third of all people who play multiplayer games have had their private information published. That right there that is the exact moment I knew that the Anti-Defamation League screwed that survey up. Think about it for a moment. If that data is accurate, then take a look at the number of people that just play Fortnite. We know that the peak number of concurrent players who were playing Fortnite at one time is around 10.8 million. Epic officially says there are around 250 million registered Fortnite accounts across all platforms. And they've said that they've had over 70 million people playing in one month. Now, this survey from the ADL is only for the United States, but they argue that it is nationally representative. That means that you should be able to generalize this survey to the public at large. That means, if their data is correct, then millions upon millions of these Fortnite players have had people find out their private information and then publish it online. And that's just for Fortnite. If you look at CSGO, Apex Legends, League of Legends, Dota 2, Minecraft, World of Warcraft, all these people playing these multiplayer games, then with this study, the Anti-Defamation League is making the claim that tens of millions of people who play these games have been doxxed. And then the survey gets somehow even worse. The Anti-Defamation League claims that, quote, one in ten players has depressive or suicidal thoughts as a result of harassment in online multiplayer games. Ten percent of the people who play multiplayer games become depressed or actually have suicidal thoughts because of what the other people are saying online. Again, if you generalize that just to Fortnite, then that means in one month, seven million people are depressed or suicidal because of the chatter in the game. That's a national epidemic right there. It strains belief. But of course, traditional media, being what they are, ate this survey up and they didn't question the results. 
Cecilia D. Anastasio of Kotaku, Christine Fisher of Engadget, Edward Baig of USA Today, Dave Smith of Business Insider, Imran Khan of Game Informer, Kerry Mihal Mihalsik of CNET, Dean Takahashi of Venture Beat, PC Mag, Tech Times, the list goes on and on. All of them reported on these results, none of them questioned the survey. But ladies and gentlemen, I am not traditional media. I went to the source to find out what the hell is going on here. I'm not sure I came up with a satisfactory answer, but after about a week of trying, I finally did at least receive an answer. First, let's talk about the sample. For those of you who don't know, when we talk about surveys, the sample is the database of people that you contact to complete the survey. It is the target population. In their methodology, the Anti-Defamation League states that they design, quote, a nationally representative survey. Now, when I worked in survey research, whenever we talked about a nationally representative sample, what we meant was a sample or a population of people that represented the nation in this case the United States. The United States has 327 million people, but you're not going to try to contact 327 million people for your survey. Instead, you're going to try to contact people to represent those 327 million people. And doing a nationally representative survey would mean that your demographic breakdown would be really, really close to the same demographic breakdown of the United States, if you do it right. 12.3% of the United States is African American, so 12.3% of your sample, or the people who completed your survey, should be African American. But it's not just ethnicity or gender. Around 12% of the U.S. population is between the ages of 26 to 34. So if your survey is nationally representative, then about 12% should be ages 26 to 34. California is about 12% of the population of the United States. So about 12% of your survey sample should be from California. That is what a nationally representative sample is. And that is what the Anti-Defamation League claims to have done. But that is not what they did. First, they cut off the age. They only talk to people between the ages of 18 to 45. I asked them why they cut it off at 45, and they said, quote, this survey represents the distribution of gamers in the United States. Well, except that's not true. We know it's not true because Pew Research has done surveys that are actually nationally representative, and their results found that 31% of people aged 50 to 64 play video games. 24% of people over age 65 play video games. Now, those aren't necessarily multiplayer games that they're playing, but when a third of people over age 50 and a quarter of people over age 65 play video games, it's safe to say that the number who play multiplayer games is greater than zero, which is how many of those people that were represented in this, quote, nationally representative survey. I asked the Anti-Defamation League to tell me about their sampling methodology, and they said, quote, ADL designed a nationally representative survey, meaning that it represents the distribution of gamers in the U.S. The sample was designed in collaboration with NewZoo, a data analytics firm focusing on gaming and esports. We collected 1,045 responses from a base of adults 18 to 45 years old who play games across PC, console, and mobile platforms, including 751 responses from people who play multiplayer online games. We oversampled individuals who identify as LGBTQ+, Jewish, Muslim, African American, and Hispanic slash... Latino, I'm not going to say Latinx. For the oversampled target groups, responses were collected until at least 60 Americans were represented from, represented from each of those groups. Oversampling is another way that the survey is not nationally representative, but I will let my expert talk about that in a minute. Because sampling is only part of how a survey can have biases, or in other words, how it can throw off your results. One of the major sources of bias in a survey is the survey itself, or how you word the questions. How you ask someone something can make all the difference. I asked the Anti-Defamation League if they could provide me with a copy of their questionnaire. They replied, quote, The questionnaire content is proprietary, and as a standard practice, ADL doesn't share such information. 
My final question to the ADL dealt with the doxing problem. I explained to them that if their survey held true, then that would mean tens of millions of people have been doxed. I asked, quote, is that the claim here, that tens of millions of people are somehow having their private information discovered and then published through online games? They replied, quote, as defined in this survey, doxing is the internet-based practice of researching, broadcasting private or identifying information, especially personally identifying information, about an individual, group, or organization. In the gaming context, doxing commonly man manifests as personal information and is posted in chat and streaming comments. We found 29% of respondents reported having this experience in online games. So, yeah not too helpful there. <laughs> now, on to the opinion of my expert. Chris Ferguson is a professor of psychology at Stetson University. He has conducted numerous studies about gaming, particularly dealing with the issue of violence in gaming. He recently conducted a study about sexism in gaming that had some pretty interesting results. On oh, full disclosure here, I am collaborating with Professor Ferguson on a paper that we're hoping to uh, pass peer review soon. Now here's what Professor Ferguson had to say about the ADL survey. Quote, Overall, I don't find the methodology of the study very convincing. It's largely non-transparent, and the oversampling of some groups is somewhat mutually exclusive with the study being nationally representative. Of greatest concern, I didn't see any evidence that they tested for unreliable or mischievous responding, which can drive up percentages significantly, easily by 10-20%. to 20 of course, people behave badly on the internet sometimes, as in real life, but I worry that the ADL's approach here, while certainly addressing an important issue, is likely to have the ironic impact of defaming game gamer culture and increasing stereotypes and negative attitudes towards gamers. Unquote. In science, you run an experiment, then you publish the results and your methodology. That way, other people can conduct the same experiment and see if they get the same results, which verifies your work. Surveys are social science. They're not hard science, but they try to get close. If you do a survey right, then your survey should be repeatable and other people would get the same or at least very close to the same results. That can't happen with the Anti-Defamation League survey. No one can repeat it because they're not transparent. No one can verify it. Their numbers are crazy, and we have no way of testing those numbers to see if they're true or not. This is junk posing as social science. And we don't have anyone in the traditional media questioning their numbers. The ADL is a trusted organization, and a lot of social media companies rely on their expertise. When you take a look at their lack of expertise with this survey, that should scare the hell out of you. Now, before you go, let me talk to you about some game objective business, because the last two videos I've put up have been immediately demonetized. I'm a small channel, and I am not getting support from YouTube. If you'd like to see me continue putting out these videos, then please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. You can find the links below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, and toss me a subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube. Until next time. This has been Brad Glasgow with Game Objective. Thanks for watching.